What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be taking a look at an interesting little colony survival game that I think I've had on my wish list now for like years. Uh, the prologue included. The developers actually fired it over this morning with like an embargo. So the moment that you're seeing this video go live, that is the absolute first second that I'm allowed to show you this hotly awaited game and it is called Deluvian Winds. Uh, this is a game where you are in a lighthouse in some kind of like apocalyptic storm situation. And you basically got to build a colony around it. Much more than that, I don't really know. This is a game that's been kept very, very hush-hush. And so I'm hoping today ends up being like a really, really stimulating episode. I'm excited to check it out, mostly because I've been waiting for it. So, if after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, Deluvian Wins demo, or the prologue that I'm showing off right now, it should be available during the October Steam Festival, from what I understand. But aside from that, the link is down there below so you can wishlist it or whatever. And then on top of that, you'll find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live and talk about indie games or whatever else. It's all good. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into some Deluvian Wins and see how this thing turns out. I probably won't skip the tutorial since I've never seen the game before. It'll probably give everybody a good intro as well. Let's see, okay, auto-save notice, let's roll! My lighthouse is a mess. This unhinged weather and caustic catastrophes keep destroying whatever we manage to build. What a life. In any case, there's nothing else for it. We gotta rebuild. I'm getting too old for this. I know I know the feeling, gruff ancient beaver. I understand the feeling entirely. Alright. I'll wait for the next caravan. Let me know if I can help in the meantime. Don't go far. The lighthouse tower is a safe place, and there's a lot we've gotta do in order to ensure our survival. We should start by clearing out debris. We need to recycle all of this wood. I can take care of it. Just let me know where you want to go. All right. Well, let's go ahead and talk to Elmer then. And it looks like Elmer has a clear ability. So we'll go ahead and send him off. You know, I'm a little bit worried about wiping that out. That looks like that might be load-bearing debris. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be an engineer here. I'm not an engineer, but I'm just saying, looks like load-bearing debris to me. I'll remove this debris. I should be done by the afternoon. Every activity is exhausting and will lower my morale. If it ever reaches zero, I'll have to rest and I won't be able to help out anymore. Alright, well, we've got another squirrel over here. Uh, let's see. There's a greenhouse and it's still standing. If you assign me to it, I'm going to go forage for food. Good idea. Producing resources is going to be survival 101. Alright, well, go ahead and forage, I guess? Yeah, get up into the greenhouse. I mean, it's more of a brown house, but, like, I get what you're saying. I'll probably be done by the end of morning. The production of resources is dependent on a lot of factors. Morale, the traveler's specie, weather. It's your responsibility as the keeper to make sure that tasks get assigned efficiently. It's your home, after all. Alright, well, looks like we've done all the things that we need to do, and so it seems everybody's busy. Let's move on to the next phase of the day. Yeah, the whole thing seems to be kind of turn-based from what I've seen so far. It looks like we can move the camera around with Wasp. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of this artwork, because honestly, the game looks very, very pretty. It's got like a hand-drawn style to it that I think clacks without necessarily stepping on the toes. Like, there's been a, there's been a big thing lately with indie games where everybody has very, very dark, thick ink lines. I think it's I think it comes from like comic books and also just the success of Darkest Dungeon. Like that's definitely one of those art styles that oh we can go down underneath the water as well. Oh, I wonder how that's going to play out. Interesting. It looks like there's debris floating ashore too, so I'm guessing we're going to get some kind of like fisherman, yeah, with the net right here maybe to try to like grab things as they go by to maybe supplement our supplies. All right, well, let's go ahead, and I'm uh, as I was saying, I want to finish that thought. As I was saying, I'm glad to see that they didn't go with the dark ink line thing. The game has, like, a very unique... Wow, he produced a lot of food. I did not expect to get, like, 500 trillion units of kabaji. 
After work, it's time to rest. There's nothing better than a good binge to improve everybody's morale. Like, are we talking like, what are we talking here? Are we talking like vodka? Are we talking like tequila, mezcal? Like, are we talking brandy? Like, what kind of binging are we talking about? Uh, the fuller the pot, the better we will feel afterwards. Well, let me know how you feel in the morning once the headache hits. Uh, keep an eye on food reserves. It's always better to have some extra food saved up. A varied meal will give us different bonuses. Just mix up your ingredients and quantities. The flood is better with big folks like you around. Generosity, it deserves a feast. All right, so you can fill the pot with various edible resources. Morale will be affected by the amount of resources that go into the meal. The recipe and its effects will change depending on the ingredients that you choose to use. Okay, well, we pretty much, like, only have cabbage right now. So... We'll just go with, like, a copious meal, I guess? Come on, fill up that pot. Oh, you want it, like, all the way up? All right, apparently we're feasting right now. It makes our wood production go... I was trying to be a little bit conservative about the amount of cabbage that I was trying to shove into these squirrels. Uh, I, I, I don't know what a squirrel's diet looks like outside of the fact that they eat, like, berries and fruits and stuff. Like, our cabbage is gonna be okay? I'm not, I'm not like a squirrelologist, dude. Is everybody all good to go? Like, there's no other activities, right? All right, let's go ahead and we'll pass the time. So it is now officially nighttime. The fire is as strong as can be. It's a key to our survival. If I let it go out, travelers can't see the lighthouse and will become isolated from the rest of the world. Every day, the weather will have varying degrees of impact on the flame. We can maintain the fire by giving it sources of fuel. However, the items used for fuel are also materials required to build and reinforce the village. The future probably holds difficult choices. For now, however, we're going to have enough wood to keep the fire going as strong as it can. All right, so we got to feed stuff to the flame in order to keep it up and running. It is our beacon. All right. I mean, it does look like the radius went up right there, so we'll go ahead and, I guess, fill up the meter. It's not going to go out anytime soon. Travelers are going to see it from a while away. All right. Oh, on to the next phase, to the next day, to the task. Okay, so it looks like we've maybe... I don't know if that's going to be a trader or if that's going to be more villagers. I'm guessing it's going to be a trader that's going to allow us to, like, swap around our stuff. Uh, so I think we should build a wood chopper and work with one traveler. I want to work and see someone... I want to observe someone working. Apparently we get victory points for that. All right. Our next travelers are still a couple days away, so no arrivals. Let's tackle some morning tasks. Oh, I like the little interiors for the inside, too. Kind of cool. I actually didn't realize that the walls were going to phase out when you zoom in to, like, a requisite distance. All right. Well. So we got vegetables production up as a squirrel. And apparently squirrels don't like producing fish. All right. Fair enough. doesn't look like I can give out tasks right now, like in these twilight hours of the morning, like the, the breaking of the dawn. It doesn't look like there's anybody I can select or really anything that I can do, but I don't want to like bypass a phase unnecessarily, so I'm like somewhat okay with like clicking around and just sort of seeing what happens. It's like we've got a pretty solid amount of building space. All right, well, let's see how it goes. I mean, it's flashing at me, so I guess it wants me to click it. If I can make a suggestion, you don't really have a means to produce wood. I can take care of that if you want. Good idea. We have the ability to build a woodcutter's cabin. All right. Which one of you was the one that... Oh, the travelers or we travelers are looking for places to take refuge during our journey. We come with requests, and if you fulfill them, they can only benefit the lighthouse and those that come to it. Let's do this cabin. All right. Uh, so are you the guy that's good at, like... I think both of the squirrels are good at harvesting food, but we definitely need to get some food. Uh, Elmer. Build a woodcutter's cabin. And we can kind of put that like, oh, I like how it's got sort of like a stacking. Like we're basically building like a mega complex over here. I dig that. I don't know if I want this to be down below or up top though. I guess we'll just try to keep the whole thing contiguous. I'll make like a super base. We'll have like a squirrelish longhouse. Got it. All right. So each traveler has a request and a set time to fulfill it. Successful request will get you victory points. When you reach an objective, you win the game. Okay. Sounds good. You should keep building up. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. 
I was going to put him on uh, cabbage production. There we go. Get up on into the greenhouse, and let's make this thing rock. Let's see if we can put a little bit of the old slappers on this business. All right, so we're doing everything that we can do. We'll go ahead and bypass time. It looks like we did get some food out, so that's really, really nice. And then the woodcutter's cabin is now officially done, which is giving us access to victory points. It's time for me to go back on the road. I'll be on the next convoy out of here. I'll check on you if I'm ever around again. Oh, so people are going to come and go? All right, thanks for your help. You're always welcome. Have a nice trip. That's kind of like a differentiating branching path, I guess, from a lot of other colony survival games out there. Normally, like, once you acquire someone and go through whatever, like, the brainwashing process it is in order to, like, lobotomize them and make them into a follower of your colony, kind of RimWorld style, they stay forever or until death do you part. In this game, it seems like people are just going to kind of come and go as they please. All right, so different morale levels. No strength. It looks like we also have good shape. And then we have satisfied. And we have happy. And all of these things do various things. But basically, everything above green means that they get a lot more output when they do production. So I can live with that. Uh, these guys are transitioning over to... We'll put them in blue, I guess. Yeah, it seems all right. Oh, they want me to, like, fully load it out? Okay, like, I didn't want to do that. Like, I tend to be very, very... I tend to be a little bit kind of, I guess, greedy when it comes to hoarding. Anytime I've got, like, a resource management game, I keep, like, my big dragon pile behind me where I'm like, No, it's mine! Get away from my cabbages! And, like, I hide them inside of, like, a cabbage vault. But the game keeps forcing my hand to make people happy. Like, I just... I feel like happiness is not a thing that we can quantify in our colony. Whereas cabbages... And, like, wood are things that we can quantify, you know what I mean? Uh, the, like, the, the prior just seemed to be sort of, like, subjective. Like, maybe you're happier than you think you are. He said out loud as he gaslit all of his various colonists that live underneath his lighthouse. Uh, the fire can already be seen from far away. It's sometimes smart to save your resources. Okay, yeah, I guess I'll save the resources then. We're kind of on the rails right now. I'm sort of wondering if the demo's gonna let us get cut loose or if it's gonna keep us kind of held by the nose, like, the whole time. And there it is. The caravan is here. Unfortunately, we are going to lose Elmer. Convoy arrived as planned. Travelers looking for a rest, a refuge, or a meal are going to stay here for a couple of days. Let's welcome them as best we can. So really, like, it's sort of like an innkeeper sim, in all fairness. Like, at least that's what it feels like to me. Like, people are traveling along convoys in the road, and they stop off here for a little bit of a siesta before they finish up their journey. Thelmer leaving. We have two available spaces. Who will be the new vis visitors? Uh, we can get a bear. So apparently a bear wants us to build a house. We've got actually we've got all bears here. Okay. What are the bears good at? They're land based. Oh, we can get aquatic animals too. So that's how we get in the ocean to do activities. I wonder if the ocean's going to be buildable. Like we can get little like underwater, I guess like aquarium areas that we can like harvest or whatever. They want to have insects for dinner. Let's go ahead and replace with building houses, I guess. And it looks like bears are really, really good. Oh, they come with knowledge of how to build various facilities. Oh. Well, I definitely want housing. So I think we'll take Charlie. Looks like we can have four people here at a time, so I guess we'll just take them both. Man, that's fine by me. Let's see how we can help each other. Let's move on to the morning. This is like the worst Airbnb ever, though, dude. This is like one of those Airbnbs that charges you a bunch of fees to just, like, come out there and do all their chores. <laughs> like, while you're here, you must trim the hedges. You must sandblast. And also, you've got to, we've got to pressure wash the driveway. And then you will also help with mowing the lawn. And it will still be more expensive to stay here after all the fees than just getting a hotel. Airbnb. All right, so we are on the first phase of the day. As far as I understand it, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot we can do during the first phase of the day. So we'll go ahead and move on up. Hello, everyone. I cannot work in any of your workshops. Don't you have bears around? We don't. What's your specialty? Bears are experts in producing insects. Let me show you. All right. Interesting choice. So we've got a worm terrarium. 
Fair enough, I suppose. Doesn't look like it really fits right there. I'm gonna put it on the back so that I was trying. I wanted it to connect right there, but I'll put it on the back nine right there, like all the way in the rear, so that we can figure out other buildings with various shapes, so that we can put it together. Uh, the building system kind of reminds me of Spirit Fair, and that like a lot of it is kind of figuring out what Tetris shape you're gonna be mushing things together. I don't know how much that's gonna be like a priority, but I'm already like optimizing for space, and I think that's a good sign. Like scarcity existing inside the core systems of a colony survival game. And, like, even inside the way that you build your buildings and whatnot, uh, I think definitely adds a nice little tension and sort of, like, a reason for the player to really think about their decisions. Workshops aren't the only difference either. We have specific bonuses with our species. We beavers. Oh, that's a beaver? I thought it was two bears. All right. Well, apparently I've mixed up a beaver and a bear today, and I have ashamed myself. All right. So I need to account for your character. Yeah, I already noticed that. Uh, so you. No, not you. Yeah, you. I want you to go ahead and work inside the greenhouse so that we get lots of food. And then you, I would like for you to go ahead and chop wood since it said that you're good at gathering wood. So there we go. And then we'll just kind of bypass a phase of the day. Looks like it did a pretty good job. I think I'm gonna need another greenhouse though. The food is starting to look a little bit rough. Like, if he makes me fill up the pot right here, we're basically going to have nothing. Uh, the recipes you discover and their effects are documented inside your recipe book. Uh, it doesn't look like we need to spend that much food, actually. Because, like, we, we have everybody at blue tier already. And their morale hasn't gone down from working. And so, really, we'd be spending ten food just to bump that guy up to blue tier. But, like... It looks like we're getting the same plus five wood production that we were going to get anyways, so... It, it feels like a good day to kind of cut back on the old rations, since everybody seems to be in reasonable spirits. They're like humming, flogging Molly songs. But not like the sad ones, like the sun never shines on closed doors. Like the ones that are like more upbeat from like their earlier career, off of like drunken lullabies or like swagger, you know what I mean? Like, not the late tracks, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, the further it is on the album with Flogging Molly, the sadder the song gets. The earlier ones are the ones that are, like, upbeat, and they're like, oompa, oompa, you know, they got, like, a thing going on. Uh, let's go ahead, and I don't know if maybe using that much wood is a good idea. I didn't actually check the weather effects either. Oh, so they travel further along the road the brighter the beacon is. Okay. Well, we'll leave it right there for right now, and we'll just kind of see how the whole thing plays out. I don't want to overdo it with my resources if I don't have to. And let's take it over to the take it over to the Manana, man. A little bit of the old Manana morning action. Yeah, so I ha I could have had them go three tiles, but honestly, like I feel like if I'm productive in the way that I do all this stuff. I would love to observe someone working. Work with one traveler. Oh, so he wants to, like, tag team a task? Okay. What's wrong with you? I am building something. What would be the most useful for the community? I would say vegetables and wood. Because we're a little bit lower on vegetables. And that actually frees up somebody so that I can tag team like a, like an activity. And we can knock out one of those ambitions so that people are a little bit happier. All right, line up, folks. Let's do this thing. I like insects. I'm going to breed them. And I'm looking for traveling buddies. I would love it if you sent me to work with another traveler. All right. Well, they said that bears are good at producing insects, right? Yeah, their insect production is higher. So let's uh, send them over to work on the worm terrarium. And then we'll feed them the insects tonight so that we get those victory points. And then over here, we will have the beaver go work in the wood shop. And then we will also have the squirrel go ahead and help out in the workshop. That way we're knocking out two of the sub-objectives. Because I'm guessing this is one of those games that, like, the longer you play it... Oh, we're on violent wind right now. Lame. Uh, anyways, I'm guessing that this is one of those games where if you really don't hit the ground running, you're going to run into problems later on. And I actually sort of like the arrangement of the game. Like, where the caravan, on a certain level, 
you don't want the caravan to arrive because you're going to lose people and you may be trying to get activities done that are actual quests for all of your colonists. But on the other hand, if you delay the caravan for too long, you're not bringing in new blood that has like more knowledge on buildings to build and stuff like that. And so actually, I think the game definitely has kind of a good core mechanic where it's at war with itself. And that will make the player at war with themselves about what they want to do. Do you want to hurry through and get the next caravan? Or do you want to hang tight, slow down the caravan a little bit so that you can finish up everybody's personal tasks at the risk of maybe being a little bit behind the building and technology curve? I like that. That's actually a very, very kind of promising core little bit. It's like a, it's a promising little core nugget to the gameplay that I think is interesting and could kind of be manipulated in good ways to make the game more intense. Uh, let's go ahead and I guess... So a frugal meal... That'll take us up to blue right there. Do I need everybody at blue, though? This guy's leaving on the caravan, like, tomorrow, so, like, who cares? Yeah, who cares? We don't need to max out his morale because he's leaving. Uh, a meal box filled with vegetables and insects. There's also some, like, hard-boiled eggs in there. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a sloppy sucker for, like, deviled eggs and hard-boiled eggs. I know some people don't like them because of the smell. But, whoo, brother. Just a hard-boiled egg with a little bit of salt and pepper on top of it. Goes down nice. That's the good stuff right there. And then we should just have... Oh, Bianca's leaving, too. Unfortunate. All right, so some weather effects are going to reduce the fire more than others, so be careful with the wind. Yeah, so we've got a three reduction right there. Luckily, we've got lots of extra wood to stoke the fire. I mean, I can make the caravan get here tomorrow, but it's going to be really rough on our supplies. I'd like to build a lodging, though, before I do that, before the bear leaves. So, like, let's do a lodging, because maybe that'll increase the amount of slots that I have for, like, new critters that we can bring on into the lighthouse. I sort of dig the fact that the game is kind of, like, quasi-turn-based, too. Like, I, I think that actually helps set this game apart from a lot of, like, the games that are really going for, like, the RimWorld formula. Yeah, and then we can knock out housing today before the caravan gets here, and I think everything will be all right. That sounds like the plan to me. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll bypass to the next phase because nothing really happens during that first phase of the day anyways. I assume eventually there's going to be activities added to some of the dead periods. Like in the dead of night, you got to put people on like watch duty or whatever. Or like in the early, early morning, there's going to be something you can do. Yeah, that guy's offering to build a house now, which is actually exactly what I was ready for. Uh, so let's go ahead and we will knock out a house. How big is the house? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would want to live in a house that's on top of a bug farm. But sure. One day a visitor installed a very ingenious system on the side of the lighthouse. If there's nothing else to do, you can always gather drifting debris. Who knows what you might pull out? I don't want to do that. I would rather not gather debris. I wanted to put one person on wood, and I wanted to put one person on bugs. Unfortunately, this is a very, very hand-holdy prologue, unfortunately. Not a lot of, uh... Not a lot of agency for the player. I guess go fish. Alright, and then for you... How bad is the rain going to be for our fire? So should I get bugs or should I get... Let's go for wood, I guess. Oh, it looks like you can actually rest to improve your morale inside the sleeping area. Gotcha. Okay, uh, let's go for wood, I guess. Oh, I shouldn't uh, I picked the wrong person. The beaver built that. Okay, we'll go chop wood. We're still going to need it either way. But the beaver had to build the housing. And so we we're kind of SOL right there on options. Very nice. That'll help out a little bit. Oh, they got a bonus too because we fed them a good meal last night. So their morale was solid. And it looks like our victory points have continued to track upwards. Okay, so I mean like all of you guys are leaving tomorrow. So I don't much care about your morale. So unless there's some kind of bonus, I'm always going to try to, like, cheat them out of food on the last day. It's kind of like the starvation strategy for the long dark on interloper mode. Like, it might be a little bit cheesy, and I might be gamifying all this a little bit, but, like, eh, it deserves to be gamified. It's a video game. 
It has the word game in the title. Uh, let's go ahead, and since they are going to arrive regardless, what is that right there? Fire minus two? Okay. I'll worry about it later. We'll kind of see where we're at on the night before everything falls apart. Uh, what's happening over here? I find insects like to proliferate at night in the woods. Yeah, me too. I could try catching some. Sure. They're leaving tomorrow on the cart anyways, so I don't, I don't really mind if they leave in a good mood or not. As long as they leave all the goodies and the supplies behind, like, meh. I am kind of wondering if once the game opens up, the residents that you bring in are going to be randomized. So that you have to deal with that as well as another part of, like, the decision-making process. So you're trying to pick up people to shore up sort of deficiencies in your overall stockpile. While at the same time keeping the people around that you need in order to keep the victory points flowing. Does he have, like, what's on his head? Is his... There's no brain in the jar. I don't know what he has on his head. Is it like a snow globe? It's hard to tell. Like a snow geoid? All right, so we need to replace these guys. Oh, a mouse. What does a mouse do? They can build a garden, and it looks like they can build a storeroom, and they're going to be here for five days, and they want to produce 30 wood while they're here. Yeah, let's take the mouse. We'll see how the mouse is different. And then we've got Mina. They want to team up on a task. Uh, Kobe wants us to make 30 vegetables. Normal wants to eat insects for dinner. We already have that, so we could knock that out. Ooh, we could actually kind of stack these. And we've got one extra slot. Let's go ahead and we'll take... Oh, I don't know. Kobe, I guess? They're an otter, it looks like. What do otters do? They produce fish. I guess that makes sense. There's not, like, sea otters where I live, but there are occasionally otters that swim up the delta. And, like, live in the little ponds and lagoons around here. I remember it was a big deal locally that there's, like, a big lake near here. And, like, a big family of otters moved into the lake. And everybody was out there with cameras, like, on all the bridges and stuff. Because they were doing, like, cute otter stuff. Like, taking other animals and disemboweling them on their tummies. So adorable. Weather forecast doesn't look great. There's going to be a storm in the next couple days, which may cause dangerous waves that are going to crash against the lighthouse. They can vary in size, but the rooms closest to the ground, they're always the most vulnerable. We need to reinforce our rooms if we want to avoid losing them. It costs resources, but it's better than being back to square one. Okay. Interesting. So, like, this is very much a man versus nature. You know, it's like man versus the world, man versus machine, man versus nature, man versus himself. Those are like the various archetypes for story writing, and this is definitely against nature, but I like that. I like that there's not some, like, outside zombie threat or outside mutant threat or, like, outside radioactive storm thing happening. This is very much just, like, you live in, like, a very hostile environment. You've got to, like, survive in it for as long as possible and not get murdered by your roommates and, and pull, like, a full Robert Pattinson, you know? Uh, so we've got the mouse... Let's go ahead and reinforce that building right there. Good. The room has an extra health point. It'll survive the next catastrophe. Okay. Uh, for you, sir. I think I should like to send you work in the garden. For you. I think that I would like for you to... What does it cost me to reinforce? Can you work out of a building that's being reinforced? You cannot. Okay. Uh, what does it cost to reinforce that? 15 wood. I wasn't watching the last time it ticked, and so I wasn't ready for it. Uh, this time around, they want insect for dinner. What can you build? A fisherman's cabin? Might be nice. Or a storeroom. It looks like that increases our max storage on certain resources. How big is it? It's quite large, actually, is the is the answer to that question. Maybe since they're going to be here for like five more days, we instead focus on some kind of production, maybe? Didn't somebody want to work with a friend? No, they didn't want to work with a friend. They wanted 30 production on vegetables. We can do that. 
Let's just knock that out real quick. That's one ambition. We feed them insects tonight. That's two more ambitions knocked out. And then I forget what the last ambition was. So insect for dinner, 30 vegetables. Insect for dinner, 30 wood. We can knock that out. That's no biggie. Very, very satisfying choices that they've gone for, too. Like repetitive noises, like little bloops and blops. They sound better with UI contextual interactions like ticking of food into the sto stockpile if they change tonality along the way. I've noticed that with the games that are like very well designed and the ones that feel really nice to play is they'll often have kind of like a scaling tonality, I suppose, to the whole thing. Where instead of just being like blah 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 blah, it'll be like blah 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 you know something like that. Just a little thing that I've noticed about games feeling good. There's our meal with insects, so we got two more victory points right there, and then it's somebody's birthday, dude. Happy birthday to you. It's Lowry's birthday. It might help morale if we cook them a nice extra meal for the occasion. Okay. I think her morale is maxed out though. Like, I think they're already on green morale, right? Oh, that took her up to blue morale. I guess blue morale is up above. Is there, like, another... Is there a place where I can see the morale scale one more time? Because it was, like, orange, yellow, green... Eh. I don't know. Either way, though, uh, this is Diluvian Wins. I hope that you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, it seems like a fairly interesting game. So far, I'm liking the structure of it. It was a little bit handholdy for me, but I'm not going to count that against it because really with a, with, with, with a prologue, you want to get people a good taste of the gameplay, and a tutorial is kind of an easy way to do that and introduce the various gameplay elements just in case they won't run into it naturally given the number of options to play around with in their limited playtime. And so I kind of get it why they went with it that way i spent some time with other communities and seen them make offerings to the sea we could try who knows that seems kind of like a waste but sure why not superstition kind of stition little stition we'll go for it uh, but my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to i'm gonna cut this video off right at the point where i normally like to cut it off with regards to like how long the video is gonna be and that's because I want there to be some demo left for you guys to check out. I don't want to spoil the whole thing by doing an hour-long episode, uh, which, like, I, I feel like I could do right now. I want you to check it out, too. And, you know, see if you make the same observations that I did or if there's things you think could be done better. But for right now, I, I'm digging it. And actually, the fact that it's turn-based, I think, is actually resonating with me a lot. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Make sure you check out the Steam page for Diluvian Wins, and I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for the luxury of your time, and it's time for me to go. Bye, everybody.